What's going on guys? John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a drop down spinner box with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this drop down spinner box. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Friday morning here in Vegas. Very excited about the weekend. Got a big hike planned. It's going to be a lot of fun. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this drop down spinner box. So we can click the button here. We can select mushroom. It says you selected mushroom up here. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So very useful. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I've got two files here, spin.py and spin.kv. And this is our basic KV starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So I've got our builder pointed to spin.kv. And in our spin.kv file, we've got our basic starter code here. We've got a box layout. Orientation is vertical. We've got the size set to root.width and root.height, so it expands out to the entire size of our app. So Kivi has a couple of options when it comes to dropdowns. There's a dropdown list thing, and there's also this spinner. And we're going to look at spinner in this video because it is super easy. It's a lot easier than the dropdown thing, and it does basically the same thing. So I'm going to start out by just creating a label here. And inside of here, let's give this an ID of, I don't know, click underscore label, just so we can update it later after we've made our selection. And then for the text, let's just say pick favorite pizza below, right? And for font underscore size, let's go 32. So just a basic label. So now we want to create our spinner. And to do that, we just call a spinner widget here. And then let's give this an ID as well. So I'm going to call this spinner underscore ID, or maybe I would call it pizza ID or something, whatever. And now the text, this is going to be the thing that is originally on there when it first is created, right? It's not a drop down thing. It's the, the top thing that's listed. So I'm just going to type in favorite pizza, right? And now we can give this values and you can do this as a Python list or just regular quotation marks. And I'm going to do it as a list. So let's go, uh, pepper. Peroni, there we go, and let's go cheese, and I don't know, mushroom. So you can have as many of these as you want. Obviously, I'm just gonna do three for the sake of you know showing this to you. Now, here's the interesting part. We go on underscore text, and we set this to root dot something. And the something is gonna be in our Python file. It's gonna be a little function we're gonna write in a second, and we're just gonna call it. Basically, we've done this before in clicking buttons and things, right? So I'm gonna call this spinner underscore clicked. So when we clicked on it, and then here we want to pass in spinner underscore ID dot text, right? So this spinner ID is what we call this right here, our ID. So this will say, hey, whatever the text is, one of these that we clicked on, that text, send it to this function, right? So now we just need to create this function. So we can come back over to our Python file here. And inside of our My Layout widget, our main sort of class that we've created here, let's define spinner clicked. And now inside of here, we need to pass self and we also need to pass value. So this will send that value that, you know, one of these that we clicked here. It's essentially this dot text thing, right? That's going to be sent as the value. So, okay, now what do we want to do? Well, this value is whatever was selected. So we can do anything we want with it, right? So I just want to put it back up on the screen. So in our Kivi file here, we've got this label above and it has an ID of click label. So when we click on one of the drop downs, I want to just update this label with whatever we clicked, right? So we can just come in here and we've done this sort of thing before. We just call self.ids for the IDs. And what ID do we want? We want click label, which is just this guy right here, our label ID, right? So whatever you called this here, you just call that right here. And then what do we want? We want the text to then equal something. We could say, we could just say value. So if we click mushroom, that label will become mushroom. If we click pepperoni, that label will become pepperoni. So we can get fancy with this. We can do an F string if we want. I usually do F strings for these things. We just wrap this in brackets and then we can put some text here. So we could say, I don't know, you selected and then maybe a colon and then output the value. So that's really all there is to it. So if we save this and run it, 
So let's go Python spin.py. We get, uh oh, everything's scrunched together. So we have an error. Of course we have an error. It's Friday. Uh, so let's look at our KV file. Ah, so all of this stuff needs to be obviously tabbed into our box layout, right? So that's inside of there. Doy. It's Friday. So let's run this guy again. All right, here we go. So now pick favorite pizza below, favorite pizza. We click this, boom, it pops up, pepperoni. We click pepperoni, it's listed there. We can do it again. Now it says cheese. We can do it again. Now it says mushroom. So you'll notice it's going up. And that's just because that's all the space we have, right? By default, it wants to drop down, but there's nothing below here. There's no space below the button. So it's just going wherever it can, which is up. So there's probably a bunch of ways to get around that, but just the, the easiest way is just to come under here and create another label, set the text equal to nothing. Save this guy, let's run it again. And now we got a little space below, boom, it bops down. So we click pepperoni, boom, you selected pepperoni. Boom, cheese, you selected cheese. And you'll notice it's also putting the selection on the button itself. The selection stays selected in the drop down, basically. And uh, that's all there is to that. So that's the spinner. Like I said, there's other things you could do with drop downs. There's a, a drop down list thing you can use, but the spinner is so easy. And obviously, you can change the size of this. You can change the position in the way that we change the size and position of everything we've ever used. You know, we can give this a size of something. You can use size hint. You can use position hint. You know, all the things to, you know, change colors and change sizes and change everything. Uh, but, you know, this is just the basic example I wanted to show you to show you the main functionality of the thing and, and show you how to actually use it. And uh, really, really simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.